We had a very active day for severe storms yesterday. In fact, here's the latest update from the Storm Prediction Center on the filtered reports. And yes, they're reporting upwards to 20 three tornado reports just yesterday alone across portions of Mississippi back into Alabama into the Florida Panhandle back upwards to Tennessee uh, into portions of Kentucky unfortunately we had several large tornadoes come out of that region and unfortunately we had six confirmed fatalities out of that region as well the, the National Weather Service will still be doing updates for the next week or two, sifting through all the damage and be coming up with a final report to what just came out of that system yesterday. But yes, at first glance, it looks like a tornado outbreak did unfold across this region. And we set this up literally about a, a week out. Last Sunday, I put this together showing kind of a, a very dynamic system coming in out of the west coast that would shift through from west to east there was your warm sector ahead of this main line into the southeast this is where we did in fact have the tornado spin-ups and now that shifted off into portions of the florida panhandle we've got to be concerned about storms coming up the east coast especially from uh, myrtle beach to virginia beach this afternoon and then all the high winds you got high wind watches in place 45 up to 60 mile per hour gust flood warnings and flood watches in place very heavy rain along the coastal regions but then there's that cold front on the back side that will be shifting through and kind of have a rain all changing over to all snow later on tonight into the overnight hours in portions of the northeast here's the concern for today as far as tornadoes we did have in fact had that tornado watch that is now actually expired as I'm doing this video down here in the Florida Panhandle. But now that we have to be concerned about this same storms shifting up the East Coast, especially in from Myrtle Beach all the way to Virginia Beach, essentially along into portions of the Carolinas up into Virginia Beach, I do feel this area will be increasing in tornadic spin-ups as we get into the afternoon time frame so if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns hit the subscribe button and you're in to get all my daily content on this channel but i would love to reach 225,000 subscribers by the end of the year and you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content so let's look at the radar right now so this is this morning as i'm putting this update together we've got these storms that are coming out of the florida panhandle and the these are the ones that are going to be racing up the east coast so as these shift off and as we get deeper into the kind of heat up the atmosphere some of these look at the latest update some of these look to form out ahead of the main system and whatever they're ahead in the in the discrete mode that's where we've got to be concerned about a little bit more tornadic spin-ups within the sector so we got a small window there but all it takes is that small window where we have an increasing tornado threat as we get into the afternoon time frame so there are some of your preliminary updrafts and where it kind of shows where you're a little bit more susceptible or these atmosphere are gonna be rotating. And yes, as we move out of the Florida Panhandle, definitely concerned as we get up here towards the Carolinas, especially in and around the Virginia Beach region into the afternoon time frame. We've got this, we've got, we've got these upper level winds that will be shifting across and then racing up the coast. So we've got that small window still, and this is the area that are be pounded with tornadic spin ups. And then once you reach up the East Coast, very high winds, 45 upwards to 60 mile per hour gusts. They've got the high wind watches and warnings in place. Very heavy rain, two to four inches of very flash flooding rain. And then of course you'll have that colder air that comes in on the back side. But yeah, by one, two o'clock, we gotta be concerned about, here's the latest update on the high resolution guidance showing those discrete little supercells out ahead of the main system these are the ones that we've got to be concerned about towards the Wilmington region and to the Jacksonville region upwards to Greenville. And then once you swing up to Virginia Beach, this could be a nasty sell right there as we get into the afternoon. So definitely be on high alert because I do feel the tornado threat will be increasing 
into the afternoon time frame but if we expand the view this is the nasty system that will be coming up and racing up the eastern seaboard very dynamic 45 60 mile per hour gust torrential rains up the east coast and then all this changes over to a wet snow to all snow on the back side in portions of the northeast as we get after the 10 o'clock time frame into the overnight tonight so if we look at the cold side to this system we do have sporadic winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings through the appalachians through the scranton region scranton region through albany and then when yes once you get up to the mount pillar region into vermont that's when we could be looking at some very heavy intense snowfall there's the high wind watches in place for Long Island, up into Providence, through through Nantucket region, up into Boston, through Portland. Yes, all these areas could be looking at 45 upwards to 60 mile per hour wind gusts. So definitely power outages are a huge concern. And then, of course, you've got the cold side to this system on the back side with that cold front. All this changes over to snow, 5 to 12 inches, some isolated 12 to 18 inches. And there are your power outages at the latest report scattered to widespread power outages, something I've been actually talking about for many, many days with this particular system. So there's the cold front, right? So this cold front comes through on the backside. There's the temperatures by Monday morning. Everybody gets entrenched in the cold air. So a lot of this system will be a train, train you know, change, kind of changing over to a, a rain, slushy, wet, wet snow mix. And then all snow as you get into that Monday time frame. Here's the latest one of the radar updates by about, about four o'clock tomorrow morning. You can see the transition. I don't really think it snows at all in Pittsburgh, but yes, the main system will be shifting into eastern portions of PA. I think all this kind of changes over to a rain, then an all snow, wet snow, sloppy snow up here as the evaporative cooling starts to take place so as the rain falls it'll drop down those temperatures lower the temperatures another five degrees you'll start snowing then it just kind of a chain reaction as all this kind of changes over into the overnight so as you wake up tomorrow as you wake up tomorrow morning on monday trying to head to work it is just going to be nasty up here up into the northeast you got millions up uh, up here trying to you know compound with the 45 to 60 mile per hour winds you got the two to four inch rains along the coast you got the heavier snows in the interior regions it's just going to be a nasty day and trust me there's probably going to be some power outages and some delays so just just expect and allow a lot of extra time to get to work or school up here into that region but there are some preliminary snowfall totals so as this system kind of pulls through in fact these have actually been building over the last couple of uh, model runs because i do feel this is again this atmosphere has already been showing it's a little bit more dynamic uh and, and then it just continues to race up the east coast and i think all this kind of changes over to that snow so yes so anywhere in that blue sector you've got the one to three possibly two to four anywhere in the in the pink upwards to over five inches of snow so let's highlight some of these preliminary snowfall totals possibly another two inches comes out of the fredericksburg region down here to lexington park three to four five inches of snow in Indianapolis, around two inches you get up here towards you know york it upwards to two to three inches potentially up with the system down to five inches up here towards dover even up into the wilmington region around another two inches we lift further north into harrisburg around two inches notice most of this is you know in eastern pa most of western pa doesn't get much of anything but you could see some pretty decent amounts up here by scranton five six inches of snowfall and it could actually reach even far as philadelphia as kind of a wet this is not this is just a wet snow it could be a 35 degree snow but it's still going to be snowing across these regions and if you live further north yeah i don't think it makes the coast so you've got a sharp gradient of just very high intense 
heavy rainfall and all the high winds. So I don't think it really snows anything in New York City or anything along the coast here into Boston or Providence or anything. You're going to just get all the nasty rain and then the high winds with this uh, system. And then as this moves up, you're going to be seeing higher amounts up near uh, Albany. But once you get towards Burlington and some of these areas and isolated areas, that's where you go over those foot totals across this region because you'll be in that cold sector for a longer period of time and all the snow will be forming in all snow. So if we expand the view, kind of look at the big picture as we head into the next week and look at the next setup, right? So we're looking at the next setup. We actually see a pretty decent little short wave, a upper level low that's going to be building out west, right? That's typically what you kind of see in an El Nino type years. And as this builds, this is going to provide the next lift mechanism to overturn the atmosphere and to produce more rain and likely more snow across this region. What we're going to be finding is, is the ridge is going to be building over the top. So got a lot more warmer air as this cold air will be shifted off into the uh, off the east coast we've got warmer air coming in on the back side but this will also create kind of a dry slot that comes in on the back side and feeds drier air coming in as this continues to build this will help lower the pressures underneath with this particular uh, low pressure and at some of the higher levels, those atmospheres will start to get colder and that will start to change over again. So by the time we get to that Thursday time frame of next week, we're going to have a pretty you know, decent low pressure center forming up here into portions of New Mexico. So places like Santa Fe back into Albuquerque again will likely be changing over to that snow. And yes, look at the Texas Panhandle could be changing over to that snow up here some of that actually could filter into west texas but look where the rain placement is it's in west texas the panhandle in far west texas it's typically on this side right but notice the dryness that's that dry slot that's the ridge over the top that will be filtering drier air on the back side of this system so if you live on the you know eastern side i don't probably gonna get much rainfall it's all gonna be really probably out west because look at the system so we've got the rainfall totals up the east coast for this storm system over the next two days up the east coast right and then we've got the ridge just to start building over the top we've got the low pressure underneath then you got the dry slot coming in on the back side and with the heavier rains mainly over the panhandle into west texas shifting into new mexico and yes south texas will finally get in the action central texas will get in the action with the beneficial rains and there's your some of your snows that could unfold with that next system so we're going to be seeing a pretty significant low pressure going to be building across new mexico southern portions of colorado but especially into the panhandle and portions of western texas could be a sloppy again wet snow kind of a heavier snows across this region but this would be the next storm system that we'll be eyeing as we go into next week after this system ends up the east coast so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update while i protect you before and after the storm